Hey everybody, it's 11 11 p.m. on February 3rd, 2024. And as promised, I've got an article to read to you. It's the it's called The Ninth Circuit. FBI illegally raided hundreds of safe deposit boxes. You may have heard this on some other channels. They've been discussing this, but this is in the activist post dated February 2nd, 2024. So I'm going to read it to you. Ken Silva, this is Headline USA, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled Tuesday that the FBI acted unlawfully in March 2021 when it raided hundreds of renters' safe deposit boxes in Beverly Hills conducted criminal searches of all of them and attempted to permanently keep everything in the boxes worth more than $5,000 all without charging any box renter with a crime. Could you imagine going to your safe deposit box and the contents being removed and you're ne you've never committed a crime? You're not charged with a crime? But the FBI decides to go is like with their greedy little paws and just confiscate everything. The Ninth Circuit's Tuesday decision stems from an investigation of the FBI opened um, into U.S. private vaults or USPV, a company that, unlike typical banks, provides safe deposit boxes to customers without requiring identification. The FBI had investigating individual USPV customers, but determined that the quote unquote real problem was USPV, which they believed served as a money laundering facilitator. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. You know, it's really funny how, you know, people like to blame other people when they're generally doing what it is that they're blaming others of. It's called projection. So anyway, <laughs> even though the warrant authorizing the raid only permitted the FBI to open boxes to identify owners and safeguard the contents, agents rummaged through hundreds of boxes, ran currency they found in front of drug-sniffing dogs, and made copies of people's most personal records, according to the Institute for Justice, which filed a lawsuit on behalf of multiple non-criminal U.S. PV customers. The Justice Department then filed a massive administrative forfeiture claim to take more than $100 million in cash and other valuables, again, without charging any individual with a crime. The Institute for Justice added, could you imagine filing a lawsuit to get your stuff back and then the De Justice Department has the audacity to file an administrative forfeiture claim to take more than $100 million in cash and other valuables without charging anybody with a crime? Among the FBI victims were Paul and Jennifer Snitko who used their USPV box to store legal documents, watches with sentimental value, hard drive backups, coins, and gold jewelry. The Snitkos used USPV because there was a waiting list to obtain a safe deposit box at their local bank. Another FBI victim <laughs> was Joseph Ruiz, who stored $57,000 in cash in his box and used USPV because he was concerned that the the pandemic would make it impossible for him to withdraw his funds from a bank account. Initially refusing to give their victims their property back. Could you imagine? Initially refusing to give the victims their property back. My favorite Bureau of Instigation changed course and returned the stolen valuables after the plaintiffs filed a lawsuit in June 2021. The activist post is Google free, it says. <laughs> they, will, they ask your support for just a dollar per month. 
A district court initially ruled that the FBI didn't violate the Fourth Amendment with the conduct described above. But the Ninth Circuit reversed that ruling on Tuesday. Judge Milan D. Smith, writing for the court, likened the FBI's actions to the abusers that motivated the Bill of Rights. The government, quote, this is a quote, the government failed to explain why applying the inventory exception to this case would not open the door to all kinds of writs of assistance the British authorities used prior to the founding to conduct limitless searches of an individual's personal belongings, he said. It was those very abuses of power, after all, that led to adoption of the Fourth Amendment in the first place. Jennifer Snitko said that she felt validated by the court's decision. We knew that what the FBI did to us and so many others was wrong. And today's decision is a validation, she said in a press release fr from International Just Justice. It took courage for Paul and I to be among the first people to stand up publicly and call out the government. But we're so proud to have fought for our rights. This is a good day for our country and the principle that the government's power to search our property has limits. So there you go, guys. Once again, in the news, my favorite beer of instigation. They raided hundreds of safe deposit box. They felt justified. There were no warrants, no criminal investigations. They felt justified to just steal everything in the boxes. Unbelievable. And then, after the Institute for Justice filed the lawsuit on behalf of multiple non-criminal USPV customers, the Justice Department files a massive administrative forfeiture claim to take more than $100 million in cash and other valuables again without charging any individual with a crime. This is unbelievable. Well, this goes to show you guys that the Institute for Justice is pretty good at what they do. They sued the FBI and won on behalf of those poor victims that went to their safe deposit boxes to find their stuff stolen by the FBI. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this article and I'll post a link. Let's see if I can post a link. Um, um, um. What I'll do is I will post, because I'm, I'm not happy about posting external links. I know Facebook is not happy about it. Facebook. YouTube is not happy about it either. So what I'll do is I will post the information in the description section. So it's not that long, and I think I can kind of paste it in its entirely entirety. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a comment down below. And um, as I'm watching this, there's some very bizarre advertisements on the side here. But anyway, this is the activist post, February 3rd, 2024, Ninth Circuit. The FBI illegally raided hundreds of safe deposit boxes. The Institute for Justice filed a lawsuit and won. Signing off for now.